am exceptionally excited about sharing this with you this week because as stated in the thumbnail, I figured out a way of roasting my own coffee beans for less than $15, hands off, consistent every time. I'm super stoked to share that with you today. And if you wanna jump right to that, go into the description. It'll take you there if you hit it on that time code. It'll take you right to that part. But I have to tell you how I came up with this and why I came up with this. My son was invited over to his friend's house for a sleepover and I went there to pick him up the next day. And his father had this crazy lab set up on this kitchen counter. He had the espresso machine that was made from brass and glass from like the 1900s and he had an air popper for popcorn and converted it to a coffee roaster using an Arduino board. He had a scale there, it was like a lab. And I go, what are you doing? He's like, I'm making espresso. I'm like, Wow, so he took these raw beans, green beans, put them in the air popper, programmed the Arduino, it roasted them within 15 minutes, cooled it off, weighs it, grinds it, and makes for me the most unreal espresso I have ever had in my life. It was miles above anything I'd ever tasted. The, the best way to describe it is like, you eat steak your whole life, right? And then you go to a, an amazing steakhouse that has prime steak, like a prime porterhouse, like Wolfgang Steakhouse in Manhattan, my, one of my absolute favorites. And then you've been taken to a completely different level. You're like, oh, this is the way steak should taste. That was the way espresso should taste. So I said to him, I said, where'd you get the beans? I figured it had to be the beans. He says, oh, they're from this, the local roaster that we go to. I go, well, <sighs> that blew me away because I love my local roaster and he's famous. But the problem with his coffee for me is it's a little too dark. It's a little too heavy of a roast. People love it. It's just, I like a medium roast. But I couldn't believe that what I was drinking was the same beans. So I said, how is it so different? And he said, well, he goes, I roast it at a different temperature than he does, and I also steam it at a different temperature than he does, and that makes all the difference. I, I knew from that moment on that I would have to roast my own coffee. And last week, I'm in my nutritionist's office, and she says to me, off the cuff, by the way, you do drink organic coffee, right? And I'm like, well, not really. I don't serve organic coffee in my restaurant, so I kind of just drink what's there. And she was like, what? How can you drink that stuff? You don't understand. It's, it's loaded with chemicals and pesticides, and they don't care, and they lower the rates of the employees, and to make up for it, they just spray all this crap on it. It's unregular. Ah, she went crazy. And she's like, you got to drink fair trade organic only. I'm like, all right, all right, all right, cool. I'll do that, I'll do that. So I started drinking these organic coffees. And they were good, but not exactly what I remembered having at my friend's house. I said, man, now, now would be a great time to roast my own. And I think Google must have been listening because within a day, I'm getting all these ads on Facebook telling me to roast my own coffee and there's a machine that's uh, environmentally safe and it doesn't, it's, doesn't need any ventilation and blah, blah, blah. And so I'm like, all right. So I call the company up to find out a little bit more about this new miraculous machine. It was 75 thousand dollars so i'm like no it's not going to work for me but the guy was nice enough to suggest that i try a small batch roaster or what they call a sample roaster so all right so i go online and i look for small batch sample roasters and they're like eighteen hundred dollars and twenty five hundred dollars and five thousand dollars and i'm like it's not I'm not doing that either so i googled around and i looked and i found this roaster on amazon got some decent reviews and it was 150 bucks i'm like perfect then i read the description Safe Teflon. I am not buying organic coffee just to roast it in a Teflon pan. That's not going to happen either. So now I was back to square one and I decided that I'm going to try to figure out how to do this myself. And I came up with this method and it worked. So what's my $15 secret? These bags. I thought I was gonna have to fabricate them, but after a quick search, they're on Amazon. Silicone bags, and they're very stiff. It's exactly what I was looking for. We're gonna put beans in here, and we're gonna lay them flat, and then we're gonna put them in our oven. Let's get a general idea of how much coffee we're actually roasting. 
I decided that I'm gonna start roasting a Colombian coffee because that's the one I'm most familiar with. And this is an unroasted green coffee on Amazon. It's 100% organic. There's a link to it down below. So I decided that I was gonna give this a shot and roughly each one of these bags holds 10 ounces. That's a lot for roasted for a small batch roast. And what you wanna do is spread it out so that there's no overlap and just run it over with your hand and you'll feel no beans on top of one another. And the great thing is that it stays that way because of the stiffness of the bag. You want to turn your oven on and get it preheated to 400 degrees. The temperature is going to vary based on your oven and also your roasting preference. I'll be talking about that a little bit more later on. You want to take your bag of perfectly flattened beans and you want to put on the front edge of that bag a couple of beans outside so you can monitor the roasting process. You just simply put this in the top part of your oven where the heat would probably be a little bit more consistent even though it's a convection oven. And all you got to do is start a stopwatch to monitor the time. Okay Google, start stopwatch. Let's go. The good thing about this is once you know that time, you're done. You'll never have to even pay attention to it again until your timer beeps and you'll have a perfect roast every single time. Do you want a medium roast? Do you want a dark roast? It's really all experimentation and it's about your oven. But what happens if your oven isn't convection? I tried this in my upstairs kitchen in because my oven upstairs, you could turn the convection feature on and off. You can't do that on this oven down here. It's always convection. And it works fine with a gas oven. I'm not sure if it works with an electric oven. So if you have one, give it a try. Leave a comment down below, below and let me know if that works. It also really helps to have a flashlight. Sometimes it's kind of dark in the oven and you're not gonna get a consistent roast if you can't see what color the beans are. So when you're checking on your beans, hit it with a flashlight through the door and make sure that those beans are the right color that you're looking for. I am super excited to experiment with all the different beans that you can possibly use. It's so fascinating to me that I can make the coffee that I want exactly how I want it all the time. If you have a specific blend that you use or a method that you use, I would really appreciate it if you left a comment down below. What beans do you use and how does it taste? Can you do darker roasts? Yes, you can. I made a roast here at 475 and I left it in the oven for an hour and 40 minutes. And you can see, this is an espresso roast. It worked really nice. It is extremely important that you have proper ventilation. Roasting coffee does not smell like roasted coffee. It's gonna stink up your house, so you gotta make sure that you have the vent turned on. Once you're satisfied with your roast, for me, like I said earlier, it was 48 minutes, you gotta make sure you put on a pair of gloves before you take that thing out of the oven, and you wanna walk over to the sink, because what happens to coffee beans when you roast them is the skin falls off, and that's known as chaff. Because once we put it on this fan, if there's chaff in the bag, even though the mesh does a pretty good job of containing it, you're gonna get chaff all over the place. When I was on Amazon, they actually make a bean chiller and I thought, oh great, I'll buy one, but it was also like $100, so I opted for this fan. Now I know some asshat is gonna leave a comment down below, you spent $15, you didn't put your factor in the cost of the fan, can't afford the fan or you don't have one, just borrow one from a neighbor. Otherwise, it's gonna cost you an extra 30 bucks for the fan. If I use my gun here, turns out that everything here is at 68, 70 degrees, which is room temperature, and that's only been down there for maybe two minutes. Pretty simple. I really like using this vacuum brewer. First of all, it's a conversation piece, right? I mean, you see this, you're like, wow. It does do a nice job of brewing the coffee. And I do like using 60 grams of coffee per liter of water. In here, we use four cups, which roughly comes out to 40 grams of, of coffee beans. It will look a little lighter than your typical drip coffee roast. And when you do grind your coffee for this, you want it to be moderately fine, just a touch more fine than if you were to use your traditional uh, drip grind. Um, a couple of pointers, this thing got a couple of negative reviews online and I think I know how to fix that problem if you are interested in buying this thing. Uh, first of all, it's not easy to clean. So, and you never should put soap in it. So what you want to do is if you buy this in the instructions, the first thing I tell you is how to clean it the first time. And you basically just fill water to the max, no coffee, 
boil it, let it, let it do its thing, and it just kind of drains out and, and it's clean. So I suggest maybe once a week, just running hot water through it or running the water through it with no coffee, and it should pretty much clean itself nicely. That hot bubbling action kind of breaks down any coffee stains that may uh, mound up on the inside of the bottom. The bottom is hard to clean. The top is actually pretty easy to clean, but the bottom is not so easy. So if you wanted to buy this, just do the initial prep for it like once a week, once every other week, and it should, uh, should last you a really long time. Makes a really good cup of coffee. You can sit there and you could roast your own beans all day long, but the big, big question is how does it taste? Let's give it a shot. First of all, it's really hot. It's so delicious. It's nutty. It's got complex layers. And to be quite candid with you, that brand of coffee is good. Not necessarily my absolute favorite. I'm gonna experiment and do different blends and figure out which one is my favorite. And I suggest you do the same. And if you do do that, please leave a comment down below. I really wanna find out how's your, how yours turns out. So what did this cost me? This cost me $7 per pound, roughly, in a five pound bag. Now, if you're watching this, I'm assuming you're really into coffee, so you may want to pick up a 25 or a 40 pound bag. The price drops around $5 a pound for the green beans, the unroasted beans. Now, if you were to pick up organic coffee that's already roasted, you are looking at approximately $20 a pound. So you save a lot of money, and that's what this channel's all about. Saving money, eating healthy, cooking like a pro. So I appreciate you tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment down below. It helps me out a lot, so please do that. And we'll see you again soon.